Hello everyone and welcome back to Piano Secrets. In this video I will be teaching you how to play The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. The first thing that we should know is the scale that we're going to be using within the song. The first scale that we have is C major. And then you have a C major chord here. And when we play this uh, melody line What we have is two chords that are outlined within it and this will help you memorize it. We have an A minor and an E minor. And all we do to that is add the D. Then you have A minor, E minor. Last time. So that chord comes from the scale, and if we have the C major scale, we have the C chord, a D chord, D minor chord, E minor, and that is the inversion that we're playing here, when we do. There you have it. And if we continue, we have F major, G major, and A minor. That is the first one we use. and A minor is like inversion. I thought it was interesting to show you a little bit of that because that's how we're gonna work within the song. Now all there is you could practice it separate hands and if you have an A minor position here you could start by playing it like this. Same here. Same thing here. And then here we're gonna put the fourth finger B A This is what we call a chromatic scale. These three notes. So all the way through the right hand will be like this. Now the thing is that the left hand is gonna play backwards so we're gonna play is the same notes. The only trick is when you play here, put one on B. Okay, I know that uh, what is left for us to do is play it together. Now notice that the A is what we call a syncopated rhythm, so we have this. So we kind of grab the onto that to the next beat. So after this, we're going to have a chord also. And this is the G major, but we're going to do is open up. So this will be the fifth chord from the scale, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll add a note on the top. And that's the big bang that we have at the end. And because it's, this is G major, we add the octave. And we play that. You could lift your hands or you could play very close to the key. It depends on your conception of the sound and what you want to get out of it. But it's almost like right here, listen to me at this moment. So uh, let's play it with that in mind. So. Notice that there is a rest. Rest. And then we'll go for it. Okay? Now the theme is going to develop, and uh, what I just did is what well, that's the, what I consider the first part. Now we're going to go, which is the introduction, and then we go to the second part, which will be the actual development of the song. We're going to start with the melody, and I want you to continue to think on the C major scale. But sometimes we might have some accidentals there, like a D sharp is going to come up when we play the melody. So here you can see a D sharp, but this D sharp, don't have to think much about it, just think it as a passing tone, like a bending note. Okay? 
So we have this to start with. It's indicated a uh, soft playing for this. And then it's gonna grow once we get here. So maybe what I'll do is play very slow this. What you need to do if this, this is difficult is simplify it a little bit and take one note at a time. So we pretty much have this. After you have the basic melody, we could add the octave. And then we could add the third right next to it. So we have this. And you could split them to practice the distance from each key. Okay, this theme is gonna come back and repeat several times throughout this song. So I consider this very important to get it right. And uh, if you start playing it all together, it will be like this. Okay, so you could detach the notes a little bit because I can see that if you hold on to it too long, you might have trouble finding the next note, so detach. This one you could hold on to it because it's longer. Okay, you could also practice these sections with rhythms or backwards. And then just play it at the tempo and aim in your hand maybe towards the top melody, the C, this. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit uh, the chords at the beginning and it's going to require some chords. Now, because of this first melody, when you have E and C, that is part of C major chord. The E is here and the C is put up here. And that gives you the first inversion. Now if we get rid of the G, that chord will be still C. And that's why what we're doing here is playing the first chord. And if we drop this chord over here and add a note, uh, this C here, we also add it here. We have the rhythm section that uh, Joplin made up. So we have the C and the chord. And maybe I play very slow so you can really see because if I play too quick it probably because I'm escaping from the note too quickly you can't see very much. So C the first chord C major inversion then we go to a G. G is part of C major. So and then we go back. And then you notice here that we added a B flat. You might be wondering what is that? Why is it B flat when we are in a key of C major, which is not supposed to have flats? Well, if you have C major like this, and you have a C major seven, the fourth note, that makes it a seventh chord. But if you lower B, is the dominant seventh. And if we flip this chord, we get that one, which is the one he's using. So he's using an inversion of a C7 chord. So let's do it one last time. So C chord, G, which is part of C, C7 here. And then we go to an F. Okay? Let's put this section together. By the way, when we start on D, when we do this, we add G, B, and, and D. We add this to it. So that is G chord. 
1 chord C, D minor, E minor, F major, and G. So that one's brought up over here, and we start the melody with it. So the first one matches D sharp, and E matches with C by itself, chord, matches, and matches also here. Okay, the matching is there, so I think you could play several times until you get this. And that's it. I hope this is clear to you and uh, you should be able to do it. If not, leave a comment. We'll answer any questions you might have. Next part now. We talk about the C major on this measure and also the C7. Now what we're going to do is going to go to the fourth chord. One, two, three, four. And that is an F major. So what he does is take the F major over here and the rhythm section is going to have an F double up the F and then jump and got those two notes from it and that's it so when we play this that's all there is to it Okay, a little faster. Okay, that's it. Um, before we continue, I think you should know that the C major, the F major, the C7, and the G7 will be part of the song constantly. We're going to have it all the time. Now, the very next chord that comes to mind now is again a C major. But because on the bass we have an E, so C major is like this. He put the E on the bass, and he's gonna jump and grab these two notes. So E and these two notes. And he jumps to G, same C major chord, and he play E, G, and C. So he has this. it and all that is C major and it's gonna go against the right hand the octaves that we did but you could play single melodies at the beginning so you could do this okay now maybe I do the real version very slowly so you can see the matching so by itself Pretty much every other note will match, so. And then it's gonna repeat. So if I play a little bit faster, It's important that you realize that this would be C still, even though it has a, a bass E. This also is C, but then when we get to G, that will be a G7. G7 comes from the fifth chord. So we have F, G, B, F, G, B from there, and it's the inversion all the way down to create tension. And then back to C. Maybe what I'll do now is play just the left hand so you can see it without splitting everything. I have a sense of the overall passage. C major. C7. F. Back to C. Now we go back to G7. And again C. There's some things I like the, about the left hand and, and is when the distance gets greater, I like to increase the volume. So I could start very light. And as I go to F, a little bit more sound. 
when the right hand sings, I release that. Let's play it together slowly. And I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit the dynamic, so we could start a little bit louder here. Release. Grow on the left hand. Melody. For the first time, we have a chromatic very nicely done. And then walking up. You could do it any way uh, possible that you might like this, but I like to do it. Think about it and do it the best you can. So walking down to a D now, because after this we're going to play a G, and D and G, G is here, is related to a D major. In this case we'll play a D7, okay? D7 now, D is split, the rest of it, and G, and then we walk get up okay for the repetition then uh, we'll have the same chord so this C7 F major now walking down to D D7 now and back to G okay same thing So let's talk about that a little bit. It's important that you bring those bass lines that we discussed sometimes here to and release to get back to piano. He indicated the, the crescendo there. Now when you do the E we have this. That will be the melody. You could practice first line. Do it in octaves. And then add the C in the middle for the first three octaves. And then release without the C. It's important you add the F here, F natural. And then pretty much it repeats. Now if we do it together, we'll have this. If you are having trouble with this, you could simplify it sometimes and play just the melody. Okay. Sometimes you could do the same exercise that we did for the other one, so that means fast and slow, slow and fast. So practice on those ways. So you get more accuracy and all piano playing sometimes is never practice slow always because what you're trying to do when you practice faster is force the brain to see the notes quicker so when I do this I'm seeing the notes much faster I have to group them from A let's say to A And I have to find them quickly, so the brain is being forced all the time, rather than always seeing like this, very slow, you know. Okay, let's continue now, and it's going to change. Maybe what I'll do is play all the section very slow, uh, so you have an idea, and then we'll go to the next part. So I'll do it from the beginning.
okay notice that we repeat several times the same so I recommend working on a little bit of it and master that and then add them all up together you have to have a lot of patience but if you really enjoy the piece I also I always recommend find a piece that you really love and work on it a lot and then uh, sometimes you feel like I can't do this I can I can't do it it's very hard but if you wait a few days and uh, practice for a week and maybe two weeks and then eventually it will come to you by the way when we end here we have C major and inversion so it's a great way here we have instead of C major here we have inversion we just flip the C you know and second inversion what he does is the C here first inversion of the chord and the second inversion so one way or other you will have to know always uh, your inversion your chords all of that and uh, please comment below if, if you are not uh, well versed on those things because we could do a, a good job and teach you all the chords all the inversions within the scale so each scale will have chords and uh, inversions and um, added notes to it and what we call compounds which are a combination of sounds uh, like we have a C7 we could add a 9 to it and keep adding notes on top of that so if you're not sure about those things it, it's hard to understand music so comment below if you need some information on that well the next part is going to be the ending of the first section and what we have is this melody notice that using all the C major notes the first three notes so it's very simple and then what we add is the octave and on that last one the third uh, E will add the note in the middle a third above the E like this for each one if you miss some of them remember that you have to keep the distance the same on the finger and maybe watch the thumb or have a general view of the, what the notes are so let's do it one last time hold there syncopated syncopated again Syncopated there, and then we go back. So that's that's it. That's all we have. Now chords for the left hand. The first chord, like we discussed, C major, and he'll bring the C here, and jump and do an inversion, the second inversion of the chord. So that's just C major. We just flip the G. Then we keep this chord the same, but we're going to B flat, which is C7. We discussed this before. So we do it all. Okay, we keep using the same chords from before. We go to an F major. If you have questions about what is that, it's F major comes from A, F, A, C. So we have the A here. And the chord here flipped A C F. Okay, so we have so far. Okay, F major. Now we're going to F minor, we just flat that A. C major again. G and C. And walk up again. And this goes back to the okay so now what we do is uh, maybe play it very slow I hope you got that left hand if not it, it could take some time because every time you're leaping if you're not used to that kind of difficulty it just takes more time sometimes so you could take two measures and uh, do it very slow until you get this now if you do it together we'll have this March March by itself now together 
together. Together again. And then it goes back. Okay, maybe we do it one last time a little faster. to you and this is the second part we have the introduction and the second part is where we start developing the famous melody now let's go to the third part the third part is going to vary a little bit the chords on the left hand but uh, we have a different melody also we're going to start by playing the right hand so we'll have this repeats there. So what you have to think is we're still in C major, we're still using the same chords and the melody when you start to have a reference you could start doing this. And then add the octaves. And add the six above E. Now it's not anymore the third but the six. That tells you a lot that for any melody many times you go add the third. So if you're composing or improvising you go add the third or the six. That's wonderful to know. So and then we do the same procedure. If that's too fast you could go very slow when you start. Don't even worry about the rhythm. Get the notes first. And now we'll do it quicker. Then we have an easier part with single notes. Notice the inversion there from C. So okay, and every time you play single notes, you also outline the chord. So here we have the C major. When we go here. Have like an A minor combined with an F. We have those intervals, so it could be E minor or C also. So and then it goes back. So all together slowly will be like this. Syncopated there on the G. Sometimes many of my students, but that passage is difficult when you do this. It is, but what you have to do is play it and go. So what you do? It's because of the interval, and you have this type of finger. Left hand now. We talked about C major, and what we do is grab C on the bass. And do inversions of C. So instead of going here, we're gonna go to the inversion all the way up. We punch G. Same. C. Now single. And that's it for C. So all this is C. That's it. 
Some, some people ask me, how do you get it to go faster? So what you have to do is go down on C, and that impulse, the down, up, brings you here. Down, up. It's not necessary to play it very quickly here, but... And sometimes I grab this fingering. So basically you go down, up, and you let the force that you do down to go, lets you go to the next key. So you don't break it. So uh, the same force that you do down brings you here, down, up. So in other words, you get leverage from the note you play to go to the next one. Now, when you do it together, this section will be this. And you could play with any speed. Okay. Now, the single notes now, we're going to have a C chord. So we have the G. We're going to an F. F major again from the beginning. F minor. C major with the low. G, E, and then we come back. So F, F minor with the A flat, C major, and same. And then repeat here. So let's play it all together very slow. So. section that is different from this and I hope you get the idea that every other note matches when you do this match 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 every other note we repeat now here's gonna change so here we're gonna do the walking bass line like before but we go to G Seven and G. Right hand will have the G, G chord. Last time. If we do it together. Do it uh, one last time from here. You repeat. Now let's do the ending of the third section, and what we have is we repeat the same way. So we did this. Same. Now, here's gonna change. So what we'll do is first, uh, after the last C, when you do. Now we have right hand changes. So after the C, we're gonna do this. there is. All I have to say is we could take that as a C outline and when you get to here an F major and then C major D7 and back to C. So quicker will be a 
and we have syncopation in several places here here okay the left hand we have same chord C major uh, flipped so you have C like this we'll flip it one we have this and we split that C and the C7 remember that B flat makes it a C7 it comes from here so then we have simple chords here F major F sharp diminished and C major four of them D7 Again, this repeats two times. So, if we play a little faster, F major, F sharp diminished, C major, a little bit about the rhythm is like you should think always in two. So, one, two. thinking too so that means the first and the second beat will be a little bit louder than the one in between just like when we do this loud soft loud soft and the second beat will be a little bit lighter so loud and a little bit softer the second one that helps to practice it okay now when you put it together very slowly it will be starting on C together two times so we have this now and then repeats when you come back the second time it ends right there so we don't have this instead we have um, That's the end right there of the third part. And after this, repeat. Same thing. And maybe I play it very slow. This is the beginning of the sound, repeating again. an ending there for that repetition with a C also. Now it's going to change to a less popular tune that comes afterwards. So what we have is this. We have double notes and notice there that there is a change of key. So now instead of playing C major like we were doing we're going to change to F major and it has a B flat in it. Okay. And F major is related to C because it's contained in the C major scale. So that means from the C major scale we could go to many other scales because it's related. So here we have F and we'll use that. So melody again. Notice that outlines this. The whole melody F major and then 
we have what it is B flat here comes from this one so and we have this what some uh, people call the primary chord so we have the melody based on that then you have the F major going to B flat scale now we change now D minor you can see it there to G minor so D minor here there you have it from the F major scale and uh, you could say that it's the sixth chord one two three four five six and also going to G so the second chord that's very important to know so uh, this second section is the same melody but flipped down to another chord so we started on F now D minor to G minor okay but let me do it slowly so you can see all the notes uh, the first one D minor Now E major And then it repeats So you notice the one of the scales that we have this rhythm Then we have this, which will be E major. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now the chords are gonna change. We're gonna use the F major chord. We're gonna use this one. What he does is put the F all the way down and then grab the inversion of it. Then he grabs C. Do it one more time. So F major, now B flat, and we have the first line. So let's do it together very slow. Done. You should practice that a lot when it becomes easy. You go to the next part. Now, this section is going to do the D minor chord that we analyze. This chord is going to do the version and punch the bass. The D and the A. The G minor like this. And that's it. The, if we do it together, well, we have this. Then we're gonna have a scale. And then repeats again. So there's a lot of material there. I'm gonna cover it by playing the left hand. We already did the right hand. So we have a D minor. We use the A also, we go to G minor, split, B flat, walking up, you should always bring those up a little bit. Now here we have the same E7, okay, there's a lot of material there to look for it. But that's pretty much it. I already did it together and there is a repetition. So this is played uh, two times and we're gonna go to the part that it changes. The part that it changes, once we grab it on here, we have these notes afterwards. then repeats. So we have the C here 
it sets up four sandals, so we have to increase the volume. And also we have this, the second time, we have the F major chord here. I'm gonna do those notes one last time very slowly so you can see this. If you do it very slowly, it becomes easier. If you are going too fast and you're not ready, you will feel like you get stuck a little bit. So, now we have the B flat. So let's say we play this. Walking up. Now here is different. Walking all the way down to D flat. And then we do chord C to F. it. Now when we do it all together, together, okay. After this we go back to the theme where we play and the ends right there. And we have the last theme, which it changes a little bit, and is uh, also not very famous, and it's this. Because we already talked about the chords, you can see now, I'm going to only name it. So this is F major. Same thing, two times, we go to C, same thing, this is G7, diminish, okay, with the rhythm, if we do it together we'll have this now. gonna have the ending which is gonna change so maybe what I'll do here is just play it very slow for you so that you can see it I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed subscribe let us know in the comments below if you would like more videos like this. Thank you very much.